Hey guys, it's Frog Slicer. I have another uh, frog combo video. I have Dimitri here with me. What's up, guys? So we already uploaded a bunch of videos. Uh, we did the deck profile, which you guys seem to like. And then we did all the replays from Ribbit Rulers, which was excellent. Congrats again, Dimitri, for getting third. Thank and you. we overlooked a very important thing, or at least I did, or pushed it off until two weeks later. And that's a combo demonstration. And I'm going to have Dimitri walk us through this replay he has of th how things were supposed to go. Yeah, so this is an example of a solo test hand, uh, basically showing off if you go first and have combo, uh, this will happen every single time. Um, so if you don't have an answer to it and you're not the frog combo player, just scoop if you think they know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, right. So here, if you don't have symbols and you have a way to shuffle cards back like Avarice, you can pause it for a sec, yeah. Um, you can go for power tool. You can also often do this if you have level leader. Uh, one of my mistakes in tournament was going for power tool when I had level leader and couldn't figure out the line. I'm not sure if there was a line to get combo there or not. But uh, the idea is you want symbols of heritage, um, fishborg, and substitute all at the mm -hmm. same time to get this going. All right. So, yeah, with, uh, with Avarice, you can shuffle your Des Frog back and use it both for the power tool and oh. for the um the brio oh so you didn't level eat so here uh i did level eat the des frog when making the power tool you level eat mm. the des frog once and then you summon a uh swap frog from deck bounce the eater to hand pitch it to summon back the fishborg and then it's fishborg swap and des frog that make the power tool um okay, excellent so here, notice in my graveyard, uh, three swaps, two poison draws is ideal. And all of the uh, substitutes. That's the, that's the position that you want to be in for this, because then you sack off your substitute for the last poison draw. Right. Uh, and you can leave it on field to play around Crow. You just have one less card in hand then. So this is the start of the loop basically right so you get this draw uh and then if we could do this part slowly perhaps yeah no it's fine went through it so it's it's pitching with brio each time to bounce the heritage back to hand and it's using heritage to summon back poison draw and then summon back swap frog and then bounce then sub uh swap frog bounces itself back to hand mm -hmm. so here you start looping where you uh discard a card to draw a card um, and what you want to do is get level leader into grave and an exodius in hand. That's the point where you switch it up. So here I'm just going to, yeah, keep drawing until I get to that. And now you're just cycling. Right. I see. Uh, you want to keep pots of avarice, hold on to them. You want to keep um, symbols of heritage just for like crows later on, potentially. You want to keep true nade or heavy. Uh, here, if you could pause again. Uh, I found the Exodius. You want to get to this is a perfect time to pause. You want to get to this board then. Mm -hmm. So you pause the draw loop. Uh, you return both the heritage and the swap frog back to hand. Uh, you pull out the eater, a substitute, and fishborg from grave um, before sending everything back with Exodius. And now instead of doing the draw loop, uh, you start getting advantage by level leading off of Exodius. This you oh, might this want to fast forward. This is, this is Exodius for <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but then once we get to the actual um, part of eating off of Exodius, you might want to go slow for that. There's a lot to it. Yeah, so what you end up doing for this is uh, summoning out the eater, bouncing it to hand with swap, grabbing a frog from deck. Mm -hmm. um, so the first time you're going to have to be grabbing swap from deck, so you'll be discarding eater to bring back fishborg. Um, and the idea is you clear up space by using swap to send either dupe or poison draw, and then you have space to summon back eater, bounce it back to hand. And then you discard it for another Fishborg and repeat. Uh, once you run out of swaps in deck, instead of discarding Eater for Fishborg, you discard it to bounce Symbols of Heritage back to hand. 
So you can see me do this here. And yeah, again, you start it. off yeah. with the dupe frog as like a placeholder because you're not ready to start drawing yet. Right. You'd rather thin your deck of the frogs first before you draw because you don't want to draw yeah. into the dupe frog. So you do dupes, then poison draw. And you just grab the extra frogs that aren't needed for the combo. So Des frog and uni frog with the dupes. Yep, so you sack off the swap for the next one in deck. You can symbol summon it back. Uh, and then you pitch eater to bounce the heritage back to hand, sack off the swap frog after uh, using the level eater again. Um, sometimes I miss when uh, when the swap has already been used has already used its bounce or not. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to use it every time, but it realistically doesn't matter with all the advantage you end up getting. So yeah, you can see me yeah. go through. The poison draws now, where you yeah bring them back each time. You get the level leader back to hand. You pitch it for the heritage. So it's almost the infinite loop, but things are changing ever so yeah, slightly. Yeah. So if you if you notice, there's four eats on Exodius already, right? So just by sending Exodius back, I've gone plus four at this point. Right. Uh, and now with Pot of Avarice, uh, notice that I sent back the poison draws and the dupe frogs after doing the draw loop twice to get the Des frog and the unifrog out of my hand uh, because you want to use the dupes to get those back um, it's like maximizing the placeholders some more right and so now you can uh, continue to level lead off exodius using the avarice uh stuff that you put back in deck so it's just the same stuff all over same again. thing yep Another thing worth mentioning while it's going through this is uh, Brio uh, should be level 5 if possible. Every once in a while you need to eat Brio down twice to level 4, uh, but you're going to lose that advantage later on if you do try and plus 1 again off Brio. So you just leave it level 5. Um, so it's basically just a Death Frog? Yeah, like, so okay, like here. here is after you've drawn through all of your deck, right? you've used 1 you Exodius, you still cards. have 1 left in hand. Um, you send Brio to Grave to turn it into a um, Stardust. And the goal here is you want to shuffle Brio back into the extra deck so you can use it next turn. That's I why see. it's really important to make this Stardust before summoning the second Exodius. And yeah, you max out this Exodius, so you're just getting some value. Yep. Uh, always make sure you have Substitute, Fishborg, and Eater. Uh, if you have to discard a card to bounce Eater from your field back to your hand to make space, just do it. It doesn't matter to keep the advantage. Uh, it just matters to have all three in rotation. Just, you're just keeping the discard outlet of Fishborg and having it lie with Toad is what matters. Exactly. Keeping the tuner around and everything. Uh, Get rid of the last from Exodius. Here, yeah, oh, you, no level you make the second Stardust. You you don't eat the second Exodius. You're going to have enough levels off of both Stardusts to last you forever, to be oh, honest. Oh, I see. You're running you're... out of uh, ways to get advantage off of it. Right. Running out of You space. only have so many cards in deck. Here, when I'm making the board, I do go for one swap, eating one level uh, to get one bounce. To I don't go for another one. You want to make sure that you have two swaps left in deck uh, for mm -hmm. the next turn. Because you want to make sure you can summon one from deck and free up your field. So you're trying to maintain cards, lower your risk of drawing a dupe, and yep. uh, keep swaps as backup plans. So that right. this is the new stable board. It's So, yeah, this is the new stable board. Uh, you want double Stardust. You want double dupe. It helps to have a Substitute, or at least Substitute access somehow. It can be in your hand. It can be um, three in grave with symbols, although that's not quite as nice. Uh, you want to have make sure you have Heavy Storm or Giant True Nade because it helps yeah. a lot. Um, and two swaps in deck to clear up your field. So if they clear this entirely, you you still have activity because symbols, yeah. avarice, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Uh, so keeping salvage and avarice, for example, here, like sometimes you have to use them up during your combo, but it's nice to have as contingency plans in case they can deal with it somehow. Or in case you have to grind or like get more cards back in deck with Avarice, it realistically doesn't happen because this board is just so powerful. Yeah. So what Where's you do heavy? here, you heavy storm. 
clear out any back row that they have. Uh, and then you go for uh, Swap Frog, send the other Dupe Frog to add Dez Frog back to hand. Um, the goal here is to make Brio. You could also make Mistworm. Uh, any card that they have left, basically, you want the ability to bounce back to hand. So if they had a Solemn for your, uh, your Heavy or something, now you can go into the Brio, bounce right. what's left. Let's say it's, you know, two cards is what I was pretending was here. Uh, as an example. If you were afraid uh, of bottom... Oh, never mind. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. If you were afraid of bottom, you have Stardust, so they'd have to have something so specific. Yes. It's basically exactly Oppression plus Solemn I see. that stops that, and then you can just but then you have two stay on double Stardust. And swing, because right. <laughs> they're at 30, they're at 32 life. Uh, yeah, so here, uh, you use Fishborg... Uh, Substitute and Swap Frog to make Armory Arms, and you bounce the Heritage back to hand each time. So every time you summon a Swap Frog, um, you can bounce an Eater back to hand, which means these uh, Armory Arms end up costing two cards per Armory Arm. Yeah, even um, though you're even though you're touching four, it's only two in card advantage. Right. So you you can. Uh, keep sending those you have to make sure during this of course that you get all three substitutes into grave to be able to do this uh if they do end up like using a crow on a substitute or something or a swap frog you do have to change it up and figure out uh right. sort of get custom with it but it's always possible there's a lot more you could do with this avarice in terms of gaining advantage than i did here i just wanted yeah. to show the like triple armory board um and that you really, you know, can basically save an avarice in case it's necessary. Yeah, you didn't uh, need it to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm making triple arm. You could make it on Urakizis if you want to have piercing damage to, like, guarantee lethal through 9,000, maybe 10,000 uh, through gores and trag. But um, here I'm just going for the Stardust board. Uh, I think it's a lot simpler it's a little um safer it's still lethal uh through 8000 so if you don't use an upstart beforehand it's still lethal through 8000 and gores or trag right um yeah and so going it, through it a safe five, step if this fails it safe steps pivoting back to stable exactly board. yeah uh going for a 5 is basically the same cost as an armory arm cuz you also get to use the swap bounce that was your extra uh, normal this summon? is Yep, we used I one normal it. summon on Death Frog before, and now we can use our other normal on it again. Uh, it's things like that that you have to, yeah, think about. You can you can heritage back your uh, substitute here uh, if this board doesn't win it for you, and mm -hmm. then sack off the Death Frog and make a, a dupe lock. And so, like, they had to have a fader plus. Uh, a way to deal with this board within two turns, which is pretty yeah. insane for that. And board. that's just if you go for it, because just doing double start a stable board after a heavy storm exactly. can just kind of win the game by itself. And with having an avarice, they can't even deck you out at that point. So, so you have like a bunch of gradations. You have the stable board, which if they break, you have plenty of setups. So you need to like break it and banish your graveyard. Yep. Um, if you don't go all in. You still have stable board plus double stardust, which can win games by itself. And then there's any gradation from there of how hard you want to go in to play around gores and trag. Um, which I guess if you had to spend extra or if they had crow or something, you need to actually think about. Um, yeah, usually you can just make the triple armory and it's a guaranteed lethal. No matter uh, what. Sometimes you have to sack off the other stardust for the Urakizis to make sure that happens. Um but it really, yeah, against exactly decks that run Fader, you might play it differently. Uh, but against every other deck, and there's not really many Fader decks in the meta right now, you yeah. can just go for the stable board turn one and then sack it into um, the full OTK turn two if they don't have an immediate out to it. And so pretty much as soon as you get to the draw loop, um, you're guaranteed to get this. If you have to discard an Exodius because you don't have enough cards, you can always shuffle it back, draw into it again. Um, there's a, you're guaranteed to draw through your entire deck. So it doesn't matter if Level Leader is the last card. Um, as soon as you get to combo, 
uh, you, you win the duel. I feel like we kind of glossed over this because I was fast forwarding. And yeah, yeah. So this power tool play. So this power uh, tool. Notice if you look in my graveyard too. Notice you have to have the three substitutes uh, in grave mm. to be able to sack it off for a uh, power tool. And this is just a demonstration of one of the different starters because you still have all the regular starters yes. I had in my combo. But this is like yep. a new one because of symbol. Okay. Uh, another combo that uh, very often is like full combo. Um, you'll open like Fishborg plus Substitute plus Heritage. And so you can do normal summon Substitute, send it for Swamp Frogs, send another Substitute, bounce it to hand, special pitch summon. Fishborg to special it, send the third Substitute, Heritage, bring back Substitute. And then That's you cool. can pull out des frog and make it yeah yeah so normal so, something sub in my combo never resulted in combo but here uh it does because here it's very good yeah That's cool. symbols giving you extra extending um being basically a starter as well as a combo fodder yeah it's great so this is the first step in the infinite yes in the cycling draw loop so you said the, the condition yep. the condition is you just need three swaps in grave Three swaps, uh, and two Brio. poison draw, and three um, substitute, preferably. You don't you even can need to do leader. it. You can do it with uh, putting all three poison draws in grave. You can grab a, a dupe frog from deck if that's happened, and grab just a random frog back to hand the first oh. time you loop, and then start looping poison draws. That's clever. Uh, yeah. Or if you don't have enough poison draws in grave, you can grab substitute. Uh, sack that substitute for a poison draw from deck and do it but it's better to get this set up because it makes you show the combo fewer times because mm -hmm. uh, if you don't do it in this order the first time you go through the loop uh, won't count as actually showing that it is an infinite loop I see and that's okay. simple enough yeah so, so one thing to note is keeping track of how many upstarts you've used yes um, um luckily your opponent does that by <laughs> yeah. gaining the life points uh, but, but it mindful. is important to note that for the end board yeah yeah being mindful when you actually go for the combo and yeah this is this is too cool yeah i mean i'm definitely impressed because my biggest thing was i would make my stable board and you were one of the loudest people about it but plenty of people told me like hey why do you even bother with iron wall you can just do it without it and it's like well i'd prefer to have the guaranteed win once i did all this work but I think you've kind of proven, especially with the, this love leader stuff, that you can just generate enough advantage. Yeah. It's 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 guaranteed. I mean, without the love leader, it's a lot less guaranteed. Um, it's still like I wouldn't add extra garnets even if, if we were on dandy instead of love leader. Yeah. Um, just because all I care about is getting to combo. Like the odds of losing a game once I get there is so low that I just want it to happen every time if possible. And so in terms of consistency in test hands, this was 68% uh, consistent for me over 200 test hands. Uh, yeah. Actually, like, checking, did I get comboed, did I not? Uh, yeah, that's and 68 incredible. 68% of the time. Yeah, either I went for, either I uh, opened full combo going first, or I, like, if I wait a turn, I have heavy plus full combo to right. get through any back row. Uh, it usually ends up of the time. usually ends up breaking even because the heavy storm was like a minus one kind of so just waiting the extra turn for the guaranteed so it's not even like this exactly. crazy advantage it's, it's almost a one to one example yeah easier, yeah, easier it's wins. kind of like, like a one day of peace kind of card heavy yeah. storm <laughs> as long as they can't do 8k out the gate yep okay cool yeah uh so if anyone has any extra questions you can hit up Dimitri or myself uh in discord we'll We'll keep on talking about this. I mean, I'm sure we we have. I mean, we we had a conversation the other day. It was like two hours just talking about frog. So there's yeah, more to come. I think there's there's definitely a lot more you can do with this deck. There's other ways you can take it. Uh, I think mainly making it more fair as a deck, um, because from the rivet rulers and actually playing a lot of matches instead of just test hands with it, it's clear that you can actually just play the long game instead of having to get that sixty eight percent combo hit because i wasn't i didn't ever get the stable board right turn one um, and you still fought through 
Yeah. And that, so that's I been think... mostly my experience too with when I was playing the inferior versions, um, just like playing frog games, just doing frog stuff was just enough, like one in three times. Yeah. Um, there's other minutia like playing around crow uh, mm. that probably you're going to end up doing some weird plays to do that. And it's really hard to give like a straightforward video of this is how you do it. But it's things like leaving a, a substitute out or like uh, planning your play that such that if my opponent crows here, do I lose the game? Just thinking about that before a lot of your plays, or at least the ones that opponents are likely to crow on. Yeah, the way the way I was saying it the other day, I still stand by where I was saying that crow still hurts. Um, it's not necessarily an auto lose, but you have so many options with the the paths you can take that when they crow, all they're doing is all your opponent is doing is limiting your options. So if that happened to be your only play, then that's gonna hurt. But otherwise, you just kind of pivot to something else, you end on dupe block or something. Yeah. Uh. So this singular combo, right? Just knowing the line to the. Uh, full board and then otk from the full board uh gets you through basically every game that they don't have crow and that you don't have to grind it out um but if they do have crow you're going to have to do some on the fly thinking of how do i make a board while only having two swaps and grave Uh, kind of a, a play yeah there's there's too many things to cover in one video for sure but yeah i mean we'll find more stuff to talk about but I really appreciate you doing this with me today. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully uh, people enjoy it. Hopefully people learn how to do the combo. And uh, make sure that if you're bringing this, you really know how to play it well uh, and can do it fast. And make sure that if you're facing this uh, and you think they know the combo, if they get to the draw loop, just scoop. Just scoop. It's not worth it. You cannot beat that board. I at least sincerely doubt it unless you drew literally the five cards you chose to draw in your hand. Completely crafted it. If you don't scoop and you get mad, you have no one to blame but yourself. I think we'll end on that. Thanks, Dimitri. All right, yeah. (laughs) See y'all.